Okay, so now I'm on the inside of the building again, and right outside of this wall is the 5,000 gallon uh, metal tank that we saw. And uh, this pipe coming in right here uh, is um, the one that comes in from the water tank. So it's got a check valve right here installed, and then uh, piping that goes into the suction side of this VFD pump. This is a Grunfoss pump, and this one has all stainless steel internal wooded parts. So it's a little higher end than the one we saw a while ago. Uh, this pump is set up so that it can actually uh, push well water or rainwater. Uh, the green handles on the piping here uh, indicate this is my rainwater that's coming in from the water tank. The blue handle over here is my well water. Now I've currently got the well water turned off and have had it turned off for about a year. Uh, the green handles are open because we've been using rainwater at this location uh, sec successfully without having to switch back over to the well because we're catching enough water off of this structure to be able to do so. In many cases uh, you may not have a large enough structure at, at your location in order to uh, survive on rainwater alone and have to switch back and forth. So the water is, is then pushed out of this discharge up through this pressure valve actually uh, through this piping which the pressure valve is attached to and through this UV uh, filtration system. So the, the gauges are, are installed on either side of the unit. You kind of keep an eye on your inbound pressure and your outbound pressure. The first housing that you'll see here actually has a sediment cartridge on the inside. It's a four and a half by 20 inch sediment cartridge they're commonly referred to as. And uh, people often ask how often do these cartridges need to be changed? Well. Uh, it's, it's difficult to say because it depends on how clean or dirty your water is. Um, so uh, the second cartridge is a carbon filter and it tends to restrict the flow more so than the other filter does. So when you notice a drop in pressure on the discharge side of your UV system or your filtration system, uh, it's typically the culprit is this carbon filter that, that needs to be changed. Uh, you notice that I've got about 50 PSI coming in and going out. These have been in place, like I said, for about a year. I'm surprised that we haven't seen a drop in pressure yet on this, uh, this gauge, but uh, people typically will replace their cartridges at least once a year and their lamp that goes on the inside of this stainless steel chamber, uh, which uh, was the next thing we need to talk about. So as the water goes through this sediment filter, this carbon block filter to remove any uh, odd taste or smells, uh, in this cartridge. Then it'll enter this uh, stainless steel reaction chamber. Uh, inside of this chamber is a quartz sleeve. I, think, I don't know if I have a quartz sleeve here, but I definitely have a lamp. Uh, inside the, uh, the chamber is a glass tube and uh, referred to as a quartz sleeve. The lamp uh, will actually slide down inside of that. And as the water passes over it, this is of course lit up with ultraviolet light then it deactivates bacteria that's present in the water. And uh, then from that point, after it exits that chamber, the water is then at this tap uh, effectively safe to drink or potable as you'll often hear, to, hear, uh, hear, hear it referred to as, excuse me. Uh, these ball valves that are installed on the inlet and outlet side of the UV system are so that you can shut the valves and close the pressurized water when it's time for you to do maintenance or uh, replace your cartridges in the filter housings or replace your lamp. You certainly don't want to try to do that without closing the pressure off. And these buttons that are on top are called pressure relief buttons. Uh, once you've closed your, your valves and it's time to then release the pressure, you push these and uh, that allows that extra pressure to discharge. Otherwise, uh, you could find yourself in a bad situation. We've had customers that have not released that pressure and they flip the tabs uh, on these chambers to replace uh, the quartz sleeve or the lamp and it actually shoots this thing into the ceiling because there's so much pressure and you certainly don't want that to happen. It's dangerous and then of course you find yourself uh, without, without water and if you don't have an extra quartz sleeve or lamp on hand then you've got to get one before you can start using it again. So uh, again, uh, this is a uh, this is a 16 to 20 or so gallon per minute system. These come in all different sizes. 
you can get them with the, the filter housings and cartridges you can get them without and then do them separately these these uh, wall mount manifolds make it nice and easy because you just mount it uh, to the wall like I've got it here mounted to this uh, metal beam and uh, you just plumb it in one side and out the other and that saves you a lot of extra labor um, but if you do want to do them separately you certainly can buy all of these things individually and install them that way uh, another thing I should mention about this particular pump uh, this is a uh, CME plus made by Grunfoss they also have, have one referred to as a uh, CMBE uh, which is their above ground constant pressure line and these pumps uh, actually have a pressure transducer or sensor on the back side of them that uh, monitor the amount of pressure in the piping system and that's what tells this drive that's on top of the pump to speed up or slow down so uh, the pump has not been in use since we've been standing here but if someone were to turn water on somewhere you this pressure sensor would recognize a drop in pressure in the piping and would turn the pump on and you'd hear it speed up and slow down just like the one over against the wall that we looked at a while ago so um, that's it for this point of the presentation and uh, I guess that's it for now